In this video, I'll teach you how to use the website that I think is the best way to create comics online for free. It's called Toondoo.com. There are some other great websites out there that allow you and enable you to create your own comics. One of my other favorites is called MakeBeliefsComics.com, and this is really good. The thing about MakeBeliefsComics.com is it's super easy. They've simplified the process and things like that. But in doing so, they took away some features that some people might want to have. So it's very easy, but it's not very powerful. Though I still like it, and I would definitely use this probably with the younger students. Another favorite comic builder that's online that I like is Pixton.com. And this one is pretty much the opposite of Make Beliefs Comics. This site is very powerful, but not too easy to use. Also, there's some limitations with the free account. You know, you can sign up for some other specialized accounts and pay some fees and things. Uh, but this is a great tool. It's just that it's, it's super powerful and not as easy, maybe. Now, in between those two is what I think is the sweet spot, and that is Toondoo.com. This one is pretty easy, and it's pretty powerful. Let's take a look at what it can do. Once you sign up for the free account, you'll notice that there are several ways that you can jump in and start creating comics. There's the Create button that will take you directly to the Comic Builder. There's some menus across the top that you can use to access different tools that you can use to create. And then there's also some buttons along the right side of the page. I'm going to go to that section and I'll click on Toondo Maker. And the first thing I need to do is select my layout. I like that they give you several different layouts to choose from. I'm going to go with the standard three panel comic. It takes a few seconds to load and then on the screen you have three panels to work with and some images appear here at the top of the screen. And across the top I have a menu bar with tools and options that I can go through. Let's take a look starting with the top here. In the upper left corner you have a Toondoo main menu where you can create a new document, open, save, save as, or provide feedback. Next up we have characters and we also have backgrounds. Let's start with a background. Notice that if you put your mouse on each little icon for the backgrounds, it gives you the name of category of, of background. So for example, we have indoor backgrounds, we have outdoor, landmarks, abstract. We've got all these different categories or folders full of backgrounds to choose from. I'm going to go to outdoors, and I can use these arrows here to uh, browse through the available backgrounds that are outdoors backgrounds. I'm going to go with this field here. I'll just click on it and drag it down into my first panel. Notice that you can click and drag to move the background to the place you want it to be in the panel. Now that I have a background, I'm going to go in and choose a couple of characters. And again, we have some symbols, some icons that appear here. Each one of those represents a category of characters or a folder full of characters. I'm going to go down and choose the category called Kids. And again, you can see that there are lots and lots of different pages worth of characters of, of children that you can choose from. I'm going to choose this young man here and click and drag and drop him into the scene. And this young lady. So I'm well on my way to creating a comic. Now in addition to characters and backgrounds, we also have props. Now I would like to add a sun in the sky here. And so I'm going into to the Our World category, and I'm not finding a sun. I click here on Outdoors, and again, I'm not seeing a sun. But notice what you can do. Up at the top, in the upper right corner, I can type in the word sun, hit Enter, and it will bring up some images that I can use. So while in many cases I just browse for the images I want to use, Sometimes, if you're pretty specific about what you need, you can just type it in here and it'll save you some time. So I'll just drag that sun right onto my panel. Now the sun came in way too big, and this is an opportunity for me to show you the tools at the bottom of the screen. Notice that if I click on an image, for example the sun, I can go down and click this shrink button, and you can even just click and hold it. And there's also an enlarge button, so that way you can get the size that you need for each image. Now once you start adding several different icons and backgrounds and images to your panel, it might become hard for you to click and select the right thing that you're trying to select. So for that reason you may want to lock certain elements of your panels. So I'll click on the background and I'll lock it. So now you can see I can move characters around. I can move the sun, but I can't move my background. Now in my comic I want this young man here to actually have a twin 
and the two of them are going to talk to this young lady. So to make that happen, I need to select this, this young man and then click Clone. And notice what it does. I've got two now. So that's the Clone tool. Next up, I want them to talk to the, this lady here. And so I need to flip her around so that they're facing. So I'll click Flip. And because I had her selected, she's now facing left instead of right. You can also rotate characters. In this case, that doesn't make sense. And then the, the last three tools are pretty standard. You can see that I can bring characters to the front or send them to the back just by clicking on these two buttons. And there is a delete button. If I click on a character or a background or an object, I can then click delete and it'll re be removed. Now you'll see to the right of this divider here on the toolbar down at the bottom of the screen, I do have a few other options. For example, I don't want both twins to have the same facial expression and posture if possible. So I'm going to click on this first twin and then click emotion and notice that it cycles through different emotions that he might have. So I want the first twin to be happy, smiling, and the second is going to be a little concerned. In this case the characters that I've chosen don't have posture options but many of the other characters do and you can just click on the character and then click posture to adjust their posture. They could be sitting down, standing up, lying down, all these different postures. And then finally, there is a color option where you can change the color of the character. All right, I think we're ready to go back up to the top of the screen now and take a look at texts. That's what they call speech bubbles or thought bubbles. But if you just go up there, notice that there's several different pre-made text bubbles that you can click and they are adjustable. You can click on the arrows to uh, move them around to where they're appropriate appropriate to where they make sense. And you can see that there's graffiti, there's text effects, and special alphabets, all these different text options. Let me just show you the one that I use most often, and that's this one, Toondoo Pro. If you click on that one, it takes you to a screen here where it teaches you how to use Toondoo Pro, and then you can just click and drag and drop it onto the panel. What I like about this one is you have a lot more control over it. So I want this gentleman down here in the lower left, and I want the arrow to point right to his mouth. So that's easy to do. And then I can click and drag this other circle here to get the body of the arrow away from the twin's face so that he's not blocked. Next, all I have to do is click type here, select the text, delete it, and then type in what I want my first of the twins to say. Now, if you start to run out of space like I am here, you may want to just hit enter or return on the keyboard. And now I'm done with my first panel. I, all I have to do is click outside of this text box and that panel is fixed, it's done, I'm ready to move on to the second panel. Well, in my second panel, I'm going to feature the same characters and the same sun and the same field. You know, may, maybe I could change settings, but in this case, I just want to keep them all pretty similar. So that's going to take me three to five minutes to get all those characters back and in the right positions and stuff like that. Except for, notice that there is a little checkbox here in the upper right corner of the panel I've been working on. And there's really not much of an explanation for what that's about. But if you click in that little checkbox, it does a complete carbon copy of your first panel and puts it in the second panel. Now, all I have to do is make some changes. So for example, to the arrow, I'll drag it over here so that uh, Susie can talk, drag this down. I'll change what she says. So that looks good to me. Although I do want to change some of their emotions. So I can just click on Susie, change her emotion, change the twins emotions, and then I could continue from there. I could copy this to the third panel and make one more scene. So like I said at the beginning, Toondu just does a great job of making comic creation pretty easy and yet still quite powerful where you have lots of options for your characters. Let's move on from text and let me just point out that there's also some special images that you can access. Christmas, magic, and manga. There's also some special clip art collections that you can browse through. And then finally, there's a menu for My Gallery. My Gallery gives you access to other tools that are on Toondu. There's a link to your images that you've uploaded. There's a link to the Trader, and I'll talk about that later. A link to Doodles that you'd make, and then also your favorites. Now I want you to notice here at the right, we have a couple of tools here. There's an Add tool and an Edit tool. And I'm still learning what these do exactly, but let's say there's a character that I may be using 
in the future, I could just click and drag and drop that character on where it says add. And that character gets added in my gallery. And my gallery is over here. There's also a way you can do some edits. So let's say I want to have this girl appear in my comic, but I want to make a change. Maybe I want to zoom in on her face primarily. What I could do is click and drag and drop her here on the edit button. And it lets me drag her onto the screen here. And I could focus in on a close up and I could zoom in. I need to and then save and close and now you can see in my gallery there's the edit of the character okay so play around with those two buttons if you're interested in learning how those work Toondoo has even more tools that you can use notice at the bottom right of the screen I have links to a doodler a trader and an imaginer let's look I'll look at doodler when I click on doodler it gives me some brush options and color options and then I can click and drag on the screen to add my own doodles to my comic. When I'm done, if I want to keep those, I should click Save. The next tool is the Trader tool. If you click on Trader, it brings up a character that you can customize. I can click on this gentleman's eyes to change the shape of the eyes, the size of the eyes, style. I can click on the forehead and the top of the head there to make some changes as well. The nose, the lips. So this is a way for you to customize and create your own characters. Now some people use this to create an avatar of themselves. So if you want to you can upload a reference picture of yourself and then try to copy yourself and create a character that's similar. Or you could upload the picture of another person that you want to duplicate and recreate inside of Toondoo. You can see that there's different expressions that you can add to your character. So this is great for creating your own character. You can click here to get different postures. You can rotate. There are hair options that you can access here at the top. Just lots of powerful tools here for creating your own character. When you're done, if you like it, you should click Save. But first you'll want to name it. Then click Save. I'm going to X out of that. It takes me back to my comic. And next up is the Imaginer. With Imaginer, you get to upload your own pictures and then you can change them and morph them and warp them a little bit. You could put in an image URL or you can upload from your computer. I'll click Upload. And I select a picture to upload. Next, this diamond is what I use to select exactly what part of the picture I want to capture and use. And it doesn't have to be in a diamond shape. It could be a rectangle, it could be a custom shape, whatever you want to do. There's some tools at the bottom of the screen that you can use. You can add additional points to the shape, for example, that you're using to select the area. You can also goofify your pictures. Now this makes most sense with photos of a person. So I'm going to click Close, and this time I will go to Imaginer, and I'll click Upload from your computer, select an image of a person. Now it, the picture came in pretty big, but I could of course zoom out. I can also make this diamond bigger if I want to, and of course change the shape of the diamond if I want by adding points, or moving these points around. So now watch what happens if I click Goofify. I can very quickly make this uh, young man look quite different. So when I'm done I have to click this done button and then if I want to keep this image all I have to do is click the save button. And this picture will become part of my gallery that I'll be able to use inside my comic. I'm going to close out and just to show how that works now when I go to my gallery and my images you'll see that my pictures appear there. and I can click and drag to add those two my scenes. So those are the tools you have in Toondoo to create a comic. Now when I'm done I can just go here to the Toondoo main menu, click Save, title it, describe it if I want to, I can add tags, and then I have a couple of options I, I need to think about. I could let others redo this comic. They would be able to take my work, make it their own, make some changes. I'm not going to do that in this case. And then also if I want I could let people buy this comic. Because of course they'll want to, because it's so funny and well done. Before I click publish, notice that I can choose to publish to the world, 
keep it private so I'm the only one that can see it, or just share with friends. And to do that, I would need to put in their email addresses separated by commas before clicking the Publish button. I'm just going to publish to the world, and I'll click Publish. A couple seconds later, it says my Tundu is ready. I could print it. I could go to its page. I'm just going to click OK, because I want you to know how to find that page again later. So I click OK. I'm done. I can X out here in the upper left corner. It's going to be concerned that I might lose my work, but I'll just click Leave this page to get out. So let's say a week from now, I want to find it. All I have to do is go here to the upper left corner where it says Tunes, choose My Tunes, and it loads all of my tunes. Now you can see in the upper left, this is the one I just made. I can click here to edit it some more, to work on it more, but I'll just click down here where it says Go to Page. It's going to pull up my comic in all of its grand glory. So there's my great comic. Now, a lot of times, you'll see some tools appear down here underneath your comic. I'll show you another way to get those, though, if, if they don't appear for you. But here on this screen, notice that you do have an option to buy the comic that you've just created. So I could pay some money to get a print quality image of this tune. Why would I ever want to do that? Well, personally, I probably wouldn't, but what if you wanted to make a t-shirt with your comic printed on it? You would probably want to buy a print quality version of the image. It's just a few dollars and then you get to download a very high quality version of your comic. I'm just going to X out and it'll go back to my Tundus. Now to show you those tools that usually appear there underneath the comic, you can also go here where it says preview and click and sometimes it takes a few seconds but you'll notice here these tools will appear. This tells you how many people have looked at it and there's some other things as well. But this is what I really want to show you. These tools here, these options. You have the ability to print your Tundu. Just with that click of that button, it takes you to a print screen where you can print or save a copy of your comic. There's also a download option to just download this comic to my computer. I can email it to friends. There's also a way to post it to Twitter and tweet it and post it to Facebook. Now there's one more option and this is what I use more often than any other really is I click here to get the embed code for this Tundu. That copies the embed code for it. Now if I paste that code into an online website builder like Weebly let's say, my comic will appear there. But I hope that this tutorial has given you the foundation that you'll need to use Tundu to create comics. And I've found this site to be just what I was looking for. It's got the perfect balance, in my opinion, of ease of use and also powerful tools.